Hi, this is Larry Greenblatt. Welcome to episode eight of my How to Pass the CISSP exam with the help of Star Trek's Mr. Spock, Captain Kirk. And today's episode is on software development security. And hopefully you've been through this and you know my reasoning for using Kirk and Spock is to help us understand and illustrate the differences between subjective or qualitative reasoning versus objective quantitative reasoning and uh, Spock is very good at the quantitative objective looks of things but sometimes we can't quantify answers as right necessarily we can, might be able to quantify why some answers are wrong but it's a little trickier figuring out why certain answers that you know a couple answers might look right and one of them is better for this exam and um, you know Ohura here is playing a uh, an object the, the uh, Vulcan harp Ohura is a subject is the music she's playing good that depends on the uh, subjective qualities that somebody would like in music. That's an opinion. Subjective or qualitative reasoning is based on opinions. But this harp has a quantity of four knobs. Quantitative or objective thinking is based in fact. So we're going to do our best to sort it out here. And again, Spock is very good at the uh, objective and Kirk is much better at subjective reasoning. Um, by the way, I, this is the first of my presentations to happen after the April 15th, 2018 changes. And I got a couple of students feedback to me already that um, uh, there are still a number of ISO questions, uh, particularly uh, 15408. You might want to remember that. That's the common criteria. But there's we've got 27001 and 27002, Information Security Management System Standard guideline and um, well you know the ISO uh, many people think is a, an acronym it's actually a word it comes from the Greek it means equal it's like the Federation of Star Trek it's to help us all get along and treat each other as equals by coming in together with a common set of standards and guidelines all right uh, this particular question is going to address the um, well, what I call the system development life cycle the SDLC but depending on your subjective experience, if you were an application developer, you may have heard this as the software development life cycle. And I've seen uh, many CISSP books use the terms interchangeably, and I don't have a problem with that. I just don't want you to get blindsided if you say, well, why is one place called software and the other system? In my experience, in my subjective view, system is more common, but I've certainly seen software. All right. Either way. I've had, uh, again, a couple of people report back to me that there are a number of questions on the newer version of the exam, the 2018 changes that address it. And particularly, I've heard that you better know the difference between verification and validation. A couple of questions. On that. So, um, well, let's have Kirk and Spock figure this out. Kirk will read the question. Spock will answer it. Spock, which of the following best describes the difference between verification and validation with regards to the SDLC. A. Verification is to ensure that a solution meets requirements and validation ensures that systems are configured properly. Is that true, Spock? Insufficient data, Captain. I shall look up on the ship's computers and see the, the actual definitions of these words. All right, Spock, before you do that, let's read all the questions, read all the answers. B, validation is part of a system development life cycle and verification is doing operations. Negative, Captain. Operations is actually part of a system development life cycle. Aha. Uh -huh. You're gonna have to explain to me more on that, but let's read these. C, the terms are interchangeable. What do you think, Spock? That could be true, Captain. Again, when we access the ship's computer, I shall find out the actual differences between those words. All right. D, verification is to check that systems are built according to design and validation is used to ensure that a system meets requirements. That could be true, Captain. All right, Spock. Well, let's access those ship's computers. What have you got, first of all, about the SDLC? Again, Captain, that could be referring to either a system or software development lifecycle, which goes uh, and tracks the phases of a particular project from the inception till its uh, end of lifetime or retirement phase. Okay, and the difference between valid and verify. Well, valid and verify come from the ancient Earth Latin language. Valid comes from the Latin valere, meaning to be strong. And verify comes from the Latin 
verus, which means true. Strong versus true. So I could be building something and ensuring that it's strong, and I can ensure that it's true. Hmm. Let's go a little further, Spock. Um, what are the modern interpretations of these words? Well, verification is the act of verifying, the state of being verified. You may provide evidence that establishes or confirms the accuracy or truth of something, or a formal assertion of the truth of something as by oath or affidavit. Spock, you're very good at that type of thing. I've used you a number of times for these things. Okay, go on. And validation is to make valid, to substantiate, to confirm. Sounds very similar, Spock. To give legal force, to legalize. Ah, now that comes a little bit different. That sounds like more of what a captain would do. To give official sanction, confirmation, or approval to. Ah, uh, Spock, yes, this, this seems much more of my realm, a management decision. That is logical, Captain. All right, and explain to me a little bit more about the SDLC. Well, again, this takes a, a project from the first time you thought about it all the way down to the time you retired it. The basic phases, though, are project initiation, when you set the goals and the scope of a project, all the way through operate and maintain. So when we set the goals and the scope, we set constraints, basically time and monetary constraints and some other issues. But the main phases are understanding what the user wants, the requirements, and that includes both the features that they want and how well that feature should work. Mm -hmm. And then somebody will design or architect a solution that meets those requirements. Now, Captain, let me interject here. I've done a bit of this. It is very difficult to understand, particularly humans with their illogical use of language, what they really want. It is often said, that requirements are the hardest stage. Okay, but assuming then we do understand the requirements, then we architect a solution. Yes, Captain, but it's often that people design and architect solutions that didn't meet the requirements because they didn't understand them properly. All right, Spock, you've said enough on that. Let's move on. All right, well then developers or somebody will purchase a system that meets those requirements. What do you mean? Well, let's go back. In the requirements, let's say that the function somebody wanted was to encrypt data. Well, the architect would say, okay, well, we will use specifically, they'll create a spec of AES, for example. Say so we said AES at whatever, 256 bits. Okay, so that, that would go down as a specification. Yes, we would write that in a checklist and all the other architectural components. So when developers or somebody builds or buys a system, they make sure that they are putting that in, that it is indeed AES-256. Smock, that sounds more like a verification process. That's logical, Captain. Then we test it. We put this thing together, we install it or test it and assess to see if it meets the user's needs. And Spock, I'm thinking that that is validation. Does it actually do what the user wanted? Because as you said, if the architect misunderstood requirements, then they might write down checklists that don't really meet the needs. And this could be built according to design, but the design itself was wrong, in which case the user would not accept it in the end. Captain, I can't argue with your logic. You could almost be Vulcan. I'll take that as a compliment, Spock. So here's my thinking on this question then. I'm assuming that verification is to verify that we are building it according to the architecture, building according to the design. But validation ensures that it meets the user's needs. Captain, I accept your assumption there, your assessment. Thank you, Spock. I have another thing I was thinking about. There's a woman's name in English. I'll explain it to you in a moment here. But let's read this question. Which of the following best describes the difference between verification and validation with regards to the SDLC? A, verification is to ensure that a solution meets requirements. No, Spock. Validation, I said, is to ensure that it met requirements, not verification. 
So I see it as not A. We've already said it was not B. The terms are not interchangeably. I have to believe D is the answer. Verification is to check that systems are built according to design and validation is to ensure that a system meets requirements. And the way I like to remember that, Spock, a woman's name, Valerie, could be thought of as to validate requirements. Captain, if that mnemonic works for you, why not? Yes, the answer is D. And I hope you like my little mnemonic, validate requirements. But yeah, that's the most important test. Let's go back to that, right? The most important test is that it meets the user's needs, right? So if, the, uh, if requirements is really the hardest phase, and that's what I've heard over and over and over again, and I believe that. I believe in life in general. And certainly when you're taking this test, the hardest part of taking the test is understanding the requirements of the question. Once you understand it, then we could start looking at the actual answers and decide whether or not one answer works better. But the hardest part is really understanding. And I've said over and over again, my lawyers do better than my technical people because they're better at reading English. I've said it over and over again. This is an English test more than anything. And I got that feedback. Actually, there's a nice uh, review of my material recently just on Reddit. Uh, it was posted just before the April changeover. Uh, but a guy said that uh, this was by far the best thing he used. So that was kind of cool. I was April 12th post. Yep. And again, uh, so verification is to use that we are building it according to design, that we're following the specs, but validation is that it actually meets the requirements of the users. All right, I hope that's helped. Uh, if you'd like to know more, I hope to see you in one of my uh, CASP live online classes. I do this once a month. And if you uh, can't make the class, I do sell pre-recorded versions of the class. And you can see my schedule at internetworkdefense.com or just write to uh, sales at Internet Network Defense. And uh, I also started doing a one-on-one -on -one practice exam. And that's actually what the review on Reddit said. This was, he felt was the, by far the best. So what, whether you take my live class or you do the uh, recorded, um, take my one-on-one -on -one afterwards and you do four hours where I give you a practice exam, you study it on your own, doesn't have the answers, you answer it. And then you come back to me and I'll go over that uh, for four hours or so with breaks. And both people, uh, actually I got a, a, an email yesterday from somebody and I'll be posting that on my website to review, but he said the same thing. He could not have passed the test without it. So, um, but you're going to need more questions, and I highly recommend that anybody preparing for the test uh, go through my good friend Clement Dupuis, ccure.org, and or now ccure.training, and uh, get his practice questions. Uh, nobody knows more about this than Clement Dupuis. Uh, their buddies been working together since oh, almost 20 years now. All right. Thank you very much. Again, I hope this helped, and may you all live long and prosper. Bye-bye.